okay so let's uh, begin the last uh, lecture for this week okay so i would like to end up uh, explaining to you there is a concept known as discrete cosine transform so we talked about fourier transform a lot but let's uh, uh, also introduce this concept of discrete cosine transform okay so because there is only a small change when we moved from fourier transform to cosine transform but there is lot of benefits that cosine transform has in particularly for 2d images and particularly for compression because this forms the basis for the jpeg compression okay so uh, what is the difference what does what, what why we need cosine transform and why not uh, fourier transform okay let me just introduce that concept to you and this uh, sort of concludes uh, this week's uh, session on the domain transformation okay so uh, i will start with 1d case because it's uh, a lot more easier for me to explain to you the concept okay so we know that uh, this is the periodicity assumed by fourier transform or uh, discrete fourier transform right replication let's say this is my original signal okay just concentrate on this signal so fourier transform assumes that it is periodic right it is just replicated outside of it so this is my original window so maybe the n samples of a signal that i'm going to take the fourier transform on but the assumption as we discussed this uh, earlier uh, right in the case of images we discussed that see this particular signal gets replicated outside is what the understanding of fourier transform is the reason if you ask me is uh, i could understand it in this way because uh, we are talking about sines and cosines and there is a periodicity associated with them and that is why they assume Uh, for fourier transform also the signal whichever the signal that it is going to apply on the fourier transform on that signal is assumed to be periodic okay so the representation of the signal is something like this so you are really worried about x of n but it is assumed to be periodic outside of that window as well basically x of n plus n is the sort of this one and x of n minus 1 n is basically this one okay so basically you uh, sort of delay and advance your replica of the signal now is not it better as we discussed actually there is a problem here because this region right or this region you would say is sort of a sudden jump right so basically you will have sort of a sudden jump at that point and that will actually create lot of artifacts right i mean uh, the the any sudden jump in the signal this region will create sort of a problem for you because this is going to say that at the edges there is a sudden transformation and that will sort of uh, go for sort of uh, ringing in your fft or dft right and uh, by the way i think i didn't make uh, those who are signal processing background are very clear about it so fft and dft there is no difference okay so discrete fourier transform is equivalent to fast fourier transform fft the only difference is this is an algorithm to calculate dft okay i didn't mention that sorry for that so fast fourier transform is just an algorithm a very fast algorithm to calculate discrete fourier transform okay so there is no difference otherwise okay so if you really don't do any sort of windowing on the edges right you will create lot of ringing in your fft and that is why some people uh, before taking the fft or dft they multiply this with sort of a gaussian window something like this okay so that means this transition becomes smoother okay okay now going forward is not it better if i instead of uh, sort of periodically replicating it it is sort of symmetrically replicating it something like this right so here also this is my uh, signal under consideration by but i just do it instead of this one this guy will come here okay and similarly this guy will come here so if i do that i get sort of a very smooth variation you could see that okay so here what i did actually is so x of n plus x of n minus n okay so just made flip of this that's all so this became flipped here so the beauty then is actually those sudden edges won't be there and then it is something which is very very interesting and that is actually what uh, if i do this okay if i do this operation and i take fourier transform what i end up in getting is i will only have the cosine part the sine part will disappear because sine is something okay if you take cosine cosine is something which is sort of uh, uh, even symmetric right i mean if you if if i plot a cosine let's say if i plot a cosine this is zero okay and let's say this is uh, pi and this is 2 pi okay and similarly you have minus pi and minus 2 pi and we know that cosine will always start when cos 0 is 1 right and then it goes and then it becomes okay something like this right so this will be minus 
the value will be minus 1 and this will be 1 so this is something like symmetric which is actually even symmetric i would say okay but if you see sin sin will be something like let me use another uh, another color okay so sin will be something like uh, it goes sin 0 is 0 at this point and it will be maximum at pi by 2 right this is pi by 2 so then it goes to zero again and then it goes like this right so this is the difference so this this basically goes like this okay so this is equivalent to this sort of concept right and then the problem here is the dft has a combination of sine and cosine and that is why it assumes it's to be like this sort of periodic just the replication of the signal but if you do this way you end up in getting something which is only having cosine basis and that is what it is known as discrete cosine transform okay so let me just uh, erase all this and let me go back to uh, what the context means in uh, terms of images i i think i made no error he, uh, here so basically this we already saw dft assumes so this is our signal under consideration but it assumes that it is replicated throughout okay and then these edges will create issues for us and that is why we see vertical or horizontal lines in the case of an fft but in the case of a discrete cosine transform the assumption as we discussed in the previous slide is sort of replicate i mean symmetric replication of the signal so you can see here this this image looks this image looks like mirror uh, reflection of this right so and you see the smoothness okay so the 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 gradual variation will help you and then in that sense you uh, came to know that i mean you will come to know that later that there are no vertical horizontal lines in your dct okay so i hope this is very clear from these two pictures so dft uh, views the image as sort of this sort of replication whereas dct looks like it is sort of continuous okay so you will see sort of a really continuous variation in the signal i think this this is not really correct or, or maybe so uh, uh, so i mean i hope the crux is uh, clear to you okay now let's go and see uh, what coefficient wise what does it look like because i want to convey a point here as well okay so on the left hand side is a 16 point dft so i am only going to show you in u direction okay the v direction i am not v direction will also be similar so i am not really going to show you that so this is something like a 1d dft you could assume so as we go along u equal to 0 is nothing but averaging okay and u equal to 15 okay so 16 uh, uh, point dft is what you are seeing over here and this is a real part and this is the imaginary part okay so that's all so you can read something like the cos and the uh, sine part of it so if you observe here there is something which is very significant i would say around this point okay so what you going to show is this guy and this guy is exactly same similarly this guy okay and this guy is exactly same and similarly these guys are ex sorry these guys are exactly same and uh, probably you can see at the last point this guy is exactly same as this guy so that essentially means you are really okay let me discard all this okay you are really worried about only these many things okay after that it is just symmetric you are not really gaining anything after that so this essentially means the dft is really not compact okay but the important part about dft is like uh, uh, it's easily representable and it's very heavily used in terms of uh, linear time invariant systems i'm not really going into that aspect because that's not really point of discussion here but one important part about dft is other than the uh, the symmetricity the replication aspect it is really not compact okay because you are really wasting this part it's really replication of this and this can be applied even for the uh, other this side also you can see over here this guy is uh, the thing and then everything else is sort of replicated so this really is a problem and if i see the dct okay the same fourier transform expression that i introduced to you here okay so this is the transform representation and this is sort of the basis signal representation so if i expand this i in this case i just change the value of n okay that is something which is u what i am representing in the other slide so if i do that i get something here and you can see there is no replication and there is a really increasing frequency you can see this is uh, one cycle sort of this is like 1 and 1.5 cycle this is two cycles this is 2.5 cycles and go on and this is really fast frequency you could say okay so what essentially this says is so here for example 16 point f dft you really have only 8 point which is unique 
but in the case of dct you have 16 points which is unique so what essentially then it gives you is a better compactness okay so that's what full utilization of the spectrum okay so this is is important and then increase frequency resolution okay so the, the reason why it is because here you have 16 but then 8 is only valid but here all 16 points are valid so basically dct has almost twice the better resolution so for example here for example so this is the uh, range right i mean but you see the 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 way the, the frequency is incremented is almost twice as this okay so you you are going basically uh, both cases whatever i shown you here the last is sort of equivalent okay but the resolution here is much better because i have finer increase in the frequency rate and that is going to help you a lot actually in the case of dct that means if the if if my image or signal has only slow varying comp component the dft may take almost like this entire space representation okay but most of it will be confined to smaller range in the case of dct okay so that we will i will show you with an example okay so let me just quickly now go to the representation right so before i discuss about that compactness part of dct okay so this is uh, this one I, i mean in this chart i only shown you the 1d component here is how it looks like the 2d so this is basically in the x direction this is basically in the y direction and this is basically in the diagonal direction and then you can see this is an x component and this is a y component so both look same but see the orientation okay orientation of the uh, images okay <clears throat> and if somebody is interested in max this is the representation okay so this is a full representation so what is essentially i am showing you here is okay just observe here what essentially i am showing you here is u and v variation or okay okay so basically i put u and v okay and this uh, this u is here and v is here okay and x is varied uh, which whatever dimension of your image and if i have u equal to v equal to 0 i end, end up getting this one okay and then if i have u equal to 0 and v equal to 1 i may end up getting one of these okay and so on so this is the image representation of this entire matrix okay so basically and as we discussed in the last uh, lectures basically what you are doing by this operation is you dot product your image with one of these bases okay so these are different bases you dot product that and then finally you put that value the full value and that is that forms your value at the uv coordinate in your uh final image right your cosine transform image okay so this is essence uh, crux of it i hope it's very clear i need not explain it again and again okay so increasing frequency you can see it very clear right in all directions you can see that it's increasing in terms of frequency now just for a curious uh, concern just compare the dct and dft as usual so there is some symmetricity for dft along the center line okay so basically if you see here this guy and this guy is exactly same and this guy and this guy is exactly same so you really not uh, useful okay but in this case there's no repetition it is completely increasing in frequency you can see over here and even here this seems to be same but then this is in this direction and this is in this direction okay so that's very maybe this this is better to view actually so this is having a checkerboard in this direction this is in this direction so then they are unique actually now let's go back and see this is a real scenario and i would like to stop with this actually so this is the skull image and this is basically your uh, dft and this is basically your dct okay and one thing important here is so this is the region of interest for us and remaining this guy and this guy is exactly symmetric and this guy and this guy is exactly symmetric so pretty useless we generally concentrate our attention to this region whereas dct the entire region is useful okay so 0 0 is here for dct and 0 0 is here for dft so always remember that okay now let's actually zoom in this uh, particular region okay so if i zoom in for an uh, fft you or dft you will see this and if i zoom in for same region sort of in the case of dct you see here and if you observe here okay so you observe here this guys have high values here i mean there are so many high values here but on the other case uh, dct if you see so there is a gradual decrease in the energy and this is really because this image doesn't have lot of edges it is over i mean sort of sort of smooth okay and you can see that most of the energy is concentrated for dct at this region and after this 
it is sort of completely law and i i maybe some of you may be uh, thinking why i am mentioning all this nonsense here the reason is like this will help you a lot in terms of compression because most of the uh, coefficients here are extremely high and as you go towards uh, these uh, regions high frequency regions you uh, sort of right you sort of uh, sort of basically uh, having low energy values and you can really discard them so you really can discard those uh, high frequency coefficients in the case of dct and you still able to recover the image and that really is con uh, compression all about right you throw so many coefficients that means some are really gone and then uh, still you are able to reconstruct the image that means you are able to achieve compression so we will talk about that maybe next week when we talk about um, uh, some uh, classical example so we will take a case study on jpeg and really go through the steps in jpeg and dct is an essential component or essential building block in the case of uh, uh, basically Uh, compression okay jpeg comp compression okay so that's it so we this week is over so we uh, what we covered in this week is extremely important so so far in the last few weeks we were only talking about very basic operations and we remained in the spatial domain even though we did classical filtering like uh, linear filters like low pass band pass etc and even median filters or even sharpening all those were spatial but this week we introduced the domain representation it is important because you can nicely compactly represent the image in a different domain we discussed in this week two specific uh, transformations one is the dft okay extremely useful and then we talked about dct in the last i mean this uh, lecture okay so with that i would like to stop so i hope you appreciate the importance of domain transformation this is extremely important because it helps you a lot in uh, better visualization of the image better filtering of the image and not only that we will go slowly into that better compression of the image okay so that's it from my side for this week and hope to see you next week uh, for the hands on session so we will have the next week hands on session for that time we will explore these uh, all these domain transformation till then it's goodbye from my side thank you